Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. The dangerous book for boys tells the story of three brothers whose deceased father leaves adventures for them to take part in. It is produced by Brian Cranston and the great Greg Matola, and it stars our next guests, Aaron Hayes, Swoozie Kurtz, and Chris Diamantopoulos. They are the adults in the show. Now let's take a look at a clip. Okay, I think you guys have had a no, what penalty. Instagram app, you check the cheater. No. Hello, mom here. Oh, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Go easy. Look how sad they are. Give them up, now. I have something from your dad. Before he died, he told me I had no one to give it to you, and he was right. What's so dangerous about a book? For you trying to read it. Go karts. Oh, I was looking at the Great Wall of China. Oh, where's that? China. What's this? My dad left this book for me and my brothers. Adventurer. Ever since then, there's been weird stuff happening to me. Adventurer, come in. Dad, is that you? It's me. You're a go. Go where? To the moon. What? No, 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 I can't. You can do it. I know you can. Why, it's been in the clouds a little recently. And I guess we all have. Well, well, well. If it isn't Wyatt or... It's more like Wyatt. <laughs> What am I gonna do? Mom, it's okay. Everything is going to be great. I just wanted to help Mom out. The key is to figure out how. Get your butt away from my face. Get your face away from my butt. Nothing works if we don't stick together. I remember Dad never let me quit. Put together everything you've learned. Dad always said, you can't succeed unless you're willing to fail. I was worried you might have been gone forever. I am here for you. Always. He is the very best player who ever sat down at a poker table. Hey, it's his fantasy. Everybody, please welcome from the Dangerous Book for Boys, Chris Amantopoulos, Swizzy Kurtz, and Aaron Hayes. Hey, thanks for being here. Thanks for having thanks us. Thanks for having us, yeah. Congratulations on the show. It's so sweet. It's so wonderful. Congrats. It's, it really is a special sweet. show. I'm, yeah. I'm super proud of this. This is it's, it's so very nice life to be here affirming for this. show, which I think we need now. Oh, absolutely. It's it's definitely one of the most life affirming shows I've seen in quite some time. They don't really exist that much anymore. Right, everything's so no, negative, it doesn't, you know? it doesn't. So much about this show doesn't exist anymore. It's not just the the the, the fact that it's life affirming that there's 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 a throwback quality that's refreshing. That's it's not nostalgic, but it's it's taking us back to just simple uh, simpler things, and, and uh, it's crafted in such a special way. I think it's Always great. go on lesson learning adventures that now. aren't necessarily too heavy handed Absolutely. at all. It's great. And it's not, I mean, I love me some snarky comedy, uh, but I also love comedy that is just funny and isn't commenting on something else. This is a really positive show for families and everybody to watch together and that is something as a parent that's so refreshing so that when it, when we were making it and when I was watching it with my kids it was like oh this is like we can take a breath watch this and thoroughly enjoy it I like that it doesn't infantilize uh, children audiences either it, it I mean I mean the premise of this is that this family is picking up the pieces after the patriarch dies after their dad dies the subject matter that they tackle in the show is poignant, it's timely, it's emotional, um, but they're able to then mine some really great humor because, because there's that payoff. You know what I mean? We're invested in the characters because they're actually real people. Yeah, I think the jokes about each character works really well on a level of for kids and for adults. I think about your character, Susie, and I think about how uh, immediately she's very funny and lives in this world that I think only really adults would really get all of the references and the jokes, but the kids would get how she's out of place in this family just a little bit. Right, because she comes to live with these guys, you know, well, with you, to help out. She doesn't help at all. She doesn't do any of the chores she's supposed to do. Uh, she becomes uh, like a liability. She's another teenager in the house. She's a hippie, you know, rock and roll grandma. She really uh, is the teenager in the house. Yeah, she's like, right from great. the opening of the she show. She is yeah. a, a troublemaker. She she still gets the attention of men, and she goes out on dates, and she stays out late, and and uh, all, all the good stuff, you know, from the '60s. <laughs> and and she's um just just puts the role of grandmother on its head. Pretty much, which I love. I love that they're writing that. 
And uh, you know, when I was offered it and they said Brian Cranston, I said, okay, you, you, got, you have me at Brian Cranston. I mean, that's it. But then he wasn't in it, so were you like, Shh, oh, no. no but, he, <laughs> but his spirit is, I have to say, he, is, he has had, he's taken part in every aspect of this, from, from inception to the writing, and he's been integral in, in all of the choices that have, been, that have been made. I mean, everything as small as wardrobe choices and stuff like that. He's really, I think this, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think it's a passion project for him. Well, and was, you can feel him in the yeah. show. He has said as, as much, you know, the book, Dangerous Book for Boys, which is a bestseller, it's not, there's no story, there's no characters, there's nothing. It's a kind of a how to be wild, how to put down your screen and go be a kid, be a boy. Uh, so from creating it and the, you know finding the way in of having this father who has passed away and has left this book f as an instruction manual for his kids to go out and experience things. Um, and also as a show, he was so instrumental in setting the tone, which is, you know, it's things right now are a little, a little, cr a little unkind, you know, it, to in certain areas of our world that this we're hoping that this show in a, in a small part is for boys, is a uh, you know teaching a little kindness and compassion to create well-rounded men. You have a, um, a a scene in the first episode uh, where you know they they discover this letter that has been left for the boys, and it's a very moving scene. I'm wondering, this is in, in you know as much as it is for families, it being for families is also for children. What is it like to sort of do a scene like that that requires you to be that emotional, but you kind of can't, you know, you can't scare children you, with yeah, your emotions. Yeah, you know? like yeah. It's a, a fine line that you have to walk as it's an actress. A, yeah, but it's also interesting. It's also a fine line that you walk as a parent because I have two kids and there's very few times in, in that I like let them see me cry. Yeah, I you imagine know? most of parenting is just like, don't cry, don't cry. So, you're like, Whether don't they do anything gotta, bad or like, successful or anything, it's just like, don't cry, don't cry. When it means something, I'm like, all right, you know, like when my grandfather died, you know, like, that's okay. That's okay. That's emo like, isn't that like if I stub my, you know, hurt myself or something like that. Yeah. So it was a fine line to do that scene because the character is, you know, reading to her children and she wants to protect their feelings, but, but it's, so it's fighting against that the whole time. I think that was the least what I was working with in that scene. And it's hard, it's hard to go into because you're just sitting there imagining what it would be like if you're, spouse passed away or somebody you love passed away. Left a very but manipulative not. letter. <laughs> Aaron, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aaron makes me cry in so many scenes. I call her and I yell at her. She is every morning. so moving. Oh my God, killer stuff, killer. And, uh, you are playing, I, I, you know, on the, on the surface it's two characters, but I feel like it's m many more than that because when dad comes in these fantasies, he is playing, he is dad playing different characters. Yeah, it's, like, it's like 12 or 13 characters. It was, this was really an actor's dream, you know, an opportunity to play twins that couldn't be more polar opposite. Uh, and then within that, as you said, to be able to show up in my child's fantasy as various heroes from history or uh, from legend. Um, it was great. It's how, do you how do you prepare for something like that? And also, what is that like for you as an actor coming from, I think, being very well known based off of your character on Silicon Valley, which could easily be someone getting tight you could easily get typecast after something like that because you do it so well no no i don't mean that as no oh, no offense taken <laughs> you know what i mean like you because you do something like that so well and you become a loved character a beloved character in a show you could i could easily see casting directors kind of throwing you into that consistently i'm i'm a, i'm a workhorse i've been acting for 30 years and so i i it's great that people have uh, gravitated towards something i did on silicon valley i think the writing on that is excellent i love the character he's super fun to play but for me i mean how do i Prepare. I've been preparing for this my whole life. You know, what I get to do is not that different or, or dissimilar than what I was doing when I was eight years old playing pretend. You know what I mean? So when I'm called upon to play pretend of multiple characters and switch between one and the other, it's really just something I've been doing for so long. So just it's with not, better costumes. Yeah, really, better costumes. And, and lucky me, Brian Cranston wrote my lines. You know what I mean? So, um, no, I think that uh, my job is to to uh, uh, sell the material. And I, in this instance, I was given material that I believe in. It's one of the first times in my career that I was given material that I could honestly watch with my children 
And uh, that's something special, because as you said, Silicon Valley is, has certain acclaim, but I, I'm not gonna watch that with my seven and four year old. You gather around and... <laughs> no, we pop open the Trace Comas and here, you have a shot first, let's check it out. Will you be making an appearance on this season or is your character... I'm not allowed to say. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Um, what, is it, what, is it what is it like for you? I think you've had an incredible amount of... Um, uh, luck is not really the word because it's deserved, but women of a certain age don't necessarily get great roles. A lot of times, and you, through television, both streaming and major networks, have had a, a few really great roles at this point, especially in this, you know, it's, she's not just a grandmother, there's an angle, there's a take on it that is that it has more depth and is funny. That, that they would write this role for a woman of a certain age and a grandma is extraordinary. And, um, no, you're right, you, you've hit it on the head, the nail on the head. I, I, I have been very, very fortunate in what's come my way as I've gotten further into life, and I... Fortunate is a better word. Luck was not my favorite. For, well, Fortunate is you know, it's a combo, really. Um, I think they're lucky to get Swissy, though, because I, I, there's no one else that could do it. I mean, th that's the thing. There's idiosyncratic elements that she brings to it that no one else would bring, and it, that is the creation of the character. Oh, Chris, so I have to say. you're too kind. Thank you so much. Um, no, I just... I. I, I, my, let me put it this way. I mean, what, you know, my agent manager keeps saying to me, what, what would happen to ageism and sexism, Swoos? It's like, my retirement is not going well. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's just. Do you feel like as a woman in Hollywood, every time that goes like more than two months, I'm like, oh, I think Mr. Hollywood is done with me. I yeah. think that's it. I think we're done yeah. here. Well, this, I've this aged whole. out of Hollywood. I'm, I'm not a woman. Standing. I feel that way. I feel exactly that way. You can, it, I think it's <laughs> The actors, don't like actor, male or female, is kind of like, ah, oh, am I working? It's so true. Uh, I, think it, I think it's changing a little bit, though. I think it's, it's, it's um, I've been very fortunate in the stuff that's come my way. I, I can't believe it. Yeah. What did you think when they, when they showed you the script? Or you said you didn't read the script. You're like, Brian Cranston. I've I was like, it. I almost don't have to read the script. But then but again, then I, I have to read it. Uh, yeah. I, you know, as an actor, very often you get a script that you have to kind of fill in. Like, well, maybe they'll flush this out here. And that's a little minimal. And, uh, you know, yeah, we're to work with these people on a given project. This I got. And it was a feast. Like, seriously? I get to do this, 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 and then she says that, and then she does that, and then they say that about her. Oh, heaven. It's great because so many of the, guys, so many of the folks that put this together, Brian Cranston, Greg Matola, Michael Gluberman, uh, all of them are family people. Mm -hmm. And so it was neat that they were writing with families in mind and that they weren't pandering to that notion, but they were actually trying to craft something that doesn't exist in the marketplace. Yeah, so many kids' shows, you know, now that we have kids that are of age to watch live action shows, they, they skew one way or the other. It's either a family show where the kid comes in and has one line, or and it's all the parents, or it's all the kids and the parents come in and have one line. And this, I think, does a real service to every member of the family in breaking down family dynamics and how everybody is dealing w with uh, what has happened and how they're going to move forward in a touching and funny way. Yeah, so many kids shows are so strange in the sense that parents are real idiots. In they're the idiots or they don't exist. Yeah. They, they, could, like, they come in and the kids, the like, 11-year-old is like, uh, I don't think so, dad. <laughs> Like, yeah, I if I was a parent, I'd be like, I don't want my kid watching that. You could, you could be a TV sitcom writer. <laughs> yeah. I just did it, yeah. Um, but, and I think, I think your character is an excellent um, example of the depth that this TV show, that this show allows the adults in the sense that you're not just the mom, you're not just giving them rides, you're not just wrong in arguments while trying to discipline them or help them in some ways. You have your own art. Well, she's a, she's a real person, with. and as are all the characters in this family. Um, and that's, that's, what they were going for when they when they made it, what Brian Cranston wanted was, I think that's what they mean when they say what we're, when we're saying it's a real family show that everybody's human beings. It's a true ensemble. I mean, each yeah. each character has their own life. Uh, even these three little boys, who by the way are magic. They're brilliant. Yeah. yeah they're How do you work with 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 three kids like that? When you, when they're good, help? when they're good like that, it it doesn't really take a lot of effort. I mean, look, I, Aaron Aaron worked with them more than any of us, I think. Yeah. And but I think in general, you know, the adage never work with children or, or animals. I, I th these kids were super prepared. Um, I have to say to their credit as well, their parents were all really cool. You yeah. know what I mean? It wasn't like any of, oftentimes it's kind of painful to be in a situation where the children's parents want 
the job for the child more than the kid wants the job, and it's oh, really he just pain. loves your work in Silicon Valley. Yeah, right, exactly. Or they're like, get on set. Remember, you like this. Right. Yeah. No, no. But in this instance, I just want to go to school. And, and all three boys came from different strata of of understanding of of the business too. But they did great, and they bonded together. And, and when they had excess boy energy, that was is a little much. When all three of when you get a lot of little boys together, uh, they just want to smash stuff. They just want to like <laughs> wrestle. And that's wonderful. That's their energy. But they had each other. Yeah. So there's yeah. not, there's certain times where kids have kids' energy and they're on set and they have no outlet except for the adults. And we're like, I'm doing a crossword and looking at my onlines. Um, you know, like, yeah. You know, but they had, they were like, they at my onlines? Is that, is that what the kids say? I my said? onlines. What you are the onlines? <laughs> oh, and by the way, all the lines and I look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even. By the way, they do, the three of them, a mean. Imitation of Trump. Oh. Really? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice because we Just were like, we were parents. We got their energy. They all bonded together, and then they would, and then we went a different. Way. It really, it really, oh the God. time flew. Shooting, shooting it really did fly. Like I mean, fly, uh, which is. Oh, I you? overheard a conversation between the. I can't remember which two it was on the dining room table one day. We were waiting for them to light or something. I was looking at my script. And the one You're online, says, excuse me. No, <laughs> online, yeah. Uh, and, and one of them says to the other, when do you think you'll die? <laughs> and I was like, oh, God. oh. Just on set chit chat, you know, between actors. Aaron, when do you think you'll die? <laughs> oh, God. It's going to be. Okay. It's happening right now. How do you um, how do you act with with kid actors? Do you feel like you have to help them? Do you lean in, or do you let the director do that if need be? With these kids? No, with these. So it's it's interesting. I, I did a Christmas story live recently, and then we had little kids in that in that show, and in that instance, it felt necessary to sort of try and take them un, under my wing a little bit, particularly the ones that I was in scenes with, and uh, one of them I hadn't had never really done anything like that before, so to to explain to him where his eyes should be looking when the camera was there and stuff like that. And and for a live scenario Yeah, too, it was really odd. He didn't, the little guy wasn't quite sure where to look. And once I sort of broke it down for him, he got it instantly. But I have to say, with all three of these kids, you didn't need to say, they were more prepared than we were in many instances. They knew all of my lines in scenes <laughs> mm -hmm. where I was like, oh, I better bone up on my Yeah, line. we'd be like, they line, knew what is it? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I would look at each one of them doing a scene with them and think, God, I wish I were that good. Yeah, they, they were excellent. I'm serious. Really excellent. Okay. So good. Um, let's get some questions from Ronnie. Who has a question? We have three questions here. Hey there. Hi. 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 My question is today is, what was your favorite scene that you have filmed? Great question. Thank you. Did we paint it? Sorry. What's favorite what was your favorite scene? Scene favorite, scene. favorite scene. Favorite scene to film. Uh, we all weren't there for each other's scenes. Do you know what I mean? So it's hard. Just I, I did a scene where I play the, the twin brother, Terry, and he's, he's not so bright. And he's, he's, he's the kind of guy that accidents always happen to. But there was a scene that we had to do where he was trying to fix the uh, sink, the kitchen sink, and it sprung a leak. And he tried to find different ways of oh stopping God. the leak. That was so and funny. And they just sort of let me find different ways of stopping the leak. And it was a lot of fun to use different things and sit on it and do all that sort of fun stuff. I like that scene. <laughs> That was. I'm trying to remember. Uh, you were funny I had in the a lot of scene. fun scenes. What? In the icebreaker scene where you got to wear those. The, the, oh. The, that was pretty oh fun. my God! No, no, no! Yeah, I, I got you. Uh, <laughs> I know this now. It was when me and Swoozy got to be men. Like oh we, Chris had all the fun dress up and all of the fun costumes. And then there was one day where Swoozy and I put on, got to put on bald caps. And now, then I had like a selfie session in the bathroom. And then they put on my like receding hairline wig and a mustache. And I looked like a weird version of my husband. <laughs> and uh, and, and really, really cheap suits. Yeah, we looked like middle management. And we really freaked out everybody on set. They would come and they'd be like, hey, but then they suddenly you know, realized like, it was no, us. When they realized it was us, we were, she looks like Ross Perot. Like, it's, it's beyond. It it, is it's so a, fun. it's a, one of the fantasy sequences yeah. in which the littlest boy, Wyatt, becomes this major. He's at the World Poker Tournament finals. And he becomes this amazing champion up against all these guys who've been doing it for years. Yeah. And we were the cheesy announcers. And we just got to like improv and be like, are you kidding me? <laughs> 
you know, like that. And I was like, hey, look, look at him now. He is the greatest. It was so fun. I got to be an ancient Greek in one of them, too. And being a proud Greek, that was like a, an amazing. I always wanted to be like a sandal, sandals and sword epic actor guy. Uh, and it was the closest I ever got. Chris I got. Diamantopoulos. Come on. Diamantopoulos. Come on. Diamantopoulos. Diamantopoulos. Next question. Um, my question's for Swoozy. Um, I've been a big fan of yours over the years. So I was wondering if you could talk about some of your favorite roles. And do you prefer comedy or drama when you're acting? I think my favorite role is whatever I'm doing at the time, because I try to be in the moment. That's all I've got, you know? That's all any of us have. And um, But I do look back on, on some plays that I've done with great love, The House of Blue Leaves and Fifth of July and Uncommon Women and a lot of, a lot of plays, because that's what I did for so many years in New York. Um, but I really love <clears throat> things that move me, whether that means to laugh or to cry or to have great empathy for. Um, I love that as an audience watching something. So I love to do stuff where you know we can take people out of themselves for the for out of you know whatever existence they're having or whatever some everybody's going through something right everybody you meet and um, if we can for a moment or a few minutes take them out of that I think I think it really makes it worth doing. We have time for one more, right? Who is it? It's you. Hi. Uh, so this is going to be an online question. Uh, this is from Jesse. Uh, uh, they would like to know uh, if there's a movie made. Uh, called the Daring uh, Book of Girls. Uh, would you be involved with that? I would be in a heartbeat. Yeah, 100%. I think they should do it. Yeah, I have what two girls. Yeah, if they did, a, if they the did the, a counterpart to this called the Daring Daring Book for Girls, as a, there as is, a yeah, yeah, it exists. Yeah, I, if they, I, I think that's it's an excellent idea. And absolutely, gung ho. And also, it's called the Dangerous Book for Boys. But I have two girls. They're eight and ten. We watched the first two episodes. They loved it. They really did. I think the message is the same. You know, like. Put it down, engage, get out there, learn to do something. It's that time in your life where if you want to, you know, do everything you possibly can, figure out what you love, you don't, you know... It figure, could just as figure, easily be called the dangerous book for kids. For people. For kids. Yeah, yeah, dangerous exactly. book for people. Yeah. I mean, it's really for all of us. Um, guys, the show's great. Congratulations. It premieres tomorrow on yeah. Amazon. Like, all episodes yes, start sir. streaming yeah, tomorrow. all yeah. Amazon. Everybody give a round of applause for the Dangerous Book of Boys and our, our guests. Thank you so much.